Well, I think it depends. I think to me, like the best actor is someone that's really in touch with themselves emotionally and isn't afraid to express themselves and their vulnerability. Because that's what you're doing. It's not like that you're necessarily faking your emotions, but you're freely expressing them. And to have your emotions, whether they're rage or sadness or happiness, are all very close to the surface and easily accessible. So I feel like I could probably cry pretty well in a scene because, like, it wouldn't really take me that much to cry. I'm Italian, you know? It doesn't take me that much to yell. <laughs> <laughs> All my emotions are right here at the surface, just waiting to come out. <laughs> All based around Italian food. <laughs> exactly, exactly, right. Yeah, yeah, pasta and pizza and, you know, everything. That, no, you know, you said that about Vincent Price. Uh, Steve McQueen had a similar quote. He said, acting isn't acting, it's reacting. You know, and you're, you're right about that. It's just all being able to react to the right situation with the right emotion at the right time. That's and, why. And putting part of yourself in it because you want your performance to be real. You want it to be authentic. Yeah. Otherwise, it's a lie. So you really want to put part of yourself into everything that you do and find that part of yourself that's in every role. Like if you're playing a serial killer, maybe there's that part of you that has this darkness that you just don't <laughs> You know? Because you know it's wrong. But maybe it's still in there every now and then. Maybe you think every now and then, you know, that person just cut me off on my way out of um, this grocery you know, market. And if this was a different world and there were no um, consequences for my actions, maybe I would follow them home and do something terrible. <laughs> well, you've <laughs> but you've heard the story. In the world that we do, I would never do that. But maybe you're thinking. You think yeah, of it you, fantasize about it. You heard the story about how Toby Hooper came up with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. No, no. How did he do that? Yeah, he was he was a he was in lines at like a there was the late sixties, early seventies, and he was in line at Sears, and these lines went on forever. This is down in Texas, and he just he was getting frustrated, and he looked over and he saw this chainsaw, and he thought he thought just what you said, if I could, I just zzzzed right up right you know, right through there and be the next one in line. And, and that, that was the between a normal person and a serial killer is that not doing what you're thinking about. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. There there's a fine line between sane and insane, you know? Exactly. Because everybody has these dark moments and these dark thoughts. We just can't act upon them legally. Exactly. Unless we're an actor and then you get paid to act upon them. And you can have <laughs> a lot of fun. You know, sometimes I say I kill people in movies so I don't have to kill them in real life. You know, it's it's nice to be able to embrace your dark side in a film and just kind of give it free reign, you know, and kind of just like vent that, you know, something that a lot of people never get to experience. It's the closest thing to reality you can get, you know. Yeah, well, upon upon researching this interview, I, I, I read a quote off of your IMDb, which I really love. This This has got to be like, tattooed on some people and it's that horror is not a lifestyle horror is not a genre but a lifestyle mm -hmm. i love that but you know it's so true i think because not just for the actors and people in the genre but also for the fans it is like your lifestyle you go to somebody's house and the, their decor is horror their hobbies are horror their vacations <laughs> Or horror. Where are you going on vacation? Oh, I'm going to this uh, horror convention in Ohio for the weekend, you know? Yeah. Everything you do is horror related. Oh, where are we going? We're going to the Bates Motel for the week, you know, and see what that would be like, you know? Everything you do kind of revolves around that, and it is pretty much a, a lifestyle. And it's like, at this point in my life, I don't think I could even imagine, like, dating or being with someone that wasn't really into horror movies. It's like, what would we have in common? You know? It's almost like a religion. <laughs> yeah. That's why it's hard for for the horror guys. It's hard to find the horror girls that are into horror. You know, they're yeah. out there, but they're just hard to find. Is it? Well, you know what I'm noticing now with um, the Walking Dead and all the Twilight movies, which I enjoy. They're cute. They're um, not horror. Twilight's not horror, but uh, they're they're cute. They're cute. Yeah, they're cute, kind of like fantasy thing. But you notice that I think just watching the Twilight and seeing the whole vampire genre a little bit gets all these little girls very interested in like watching all Bela Lugosi movies and other vampire things. Um, and then Walking Dead gets people into watching Night of the Living Dead and other zombie things. And I think I went to Connecticut Horror Fest, uh, where I was a guest. I went to um, Mr. Hush Weekend of Horror and Wow and um, Blood and Babes. And I was a guest at all three. And it's just amazing how many little girls you see all dressed up that are so into zombies and vampires all of a sudden. And I think it's because of uh, 
how these things have been going going a little bit more mainstream. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, when, when want to get into other things, you know. Yeah, unfortunately, when they watch the Twilight films, then they go back and watch, you know, Bo Bill Lugosi as Dracula. They go, "How come he doesn't glimmer?" <laughs> exactly. Well, I grew up actually, you know, I'm a purist, but I grew up. My father introduced me first to Adam Costello and all those black and white things, and then I got involved in loving Bela Lugosi and Boris Karloff and Lon Chaney Jr. and all these wonderful old black and white films. So that was really the starting point for me. And then later on, my father got me into Hammer, like Barbara Steele. Oh, yeah, Steele, no, yeah. Barbara, everything I, to me. Uh, Vincent yeah. Weiss, Ingrid Pitt, Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing. I got all into that when I was just like a little kid, you know? And then, you know, got into like 70s, 80s horror, more modern horror. I was like a little kid carrying around Fangora magazine. Yep. Probably seemed a little demented, but, you know, what are you going to do? And I was always reading Stephen King novels and Anne Rice and Dean R. Coons, you know, as far back as like third, fourth grade, you know, hardcover versions of them. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I have pretty much had the exact same childhood as you did, except I'm a little bit older. <laughs> and you're also male, I think. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but no, the thing is, is that it was my mom and not my dad. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. when I was a kid, uh, my my mom would let my brother and I, the redheaded monster, he'd let him stay up and my, me stay up and watch uh, horror films on Friday nights. And it was it was just what you said. It was it was the Wolfman. It was Frankenstein. It was Night of the Living Dead. You know, the, the Atomic Age space, you know, sci fi films like Tarantula and and you know them, mm. along with along with uh, Night of the Living Dead. You know, and then. And then the hammer came in, just like you, you know. I, I David Prowse, the guy that played Darth Vader mm. in Star Wars, was the monster from hell in Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell. Wow. wow. You know, I mean, so yeah, Ingrid Pitt. I just watched Vampire Lovers like about a week ago. Oh, I love that. It's so you know, even by today's standards, I find it so sexy and so erotic. You know. Yes. Like how she's drinking the blood for the other woman's nipples and. Ingrid Pitt, very hot woman, you know. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Believe me, I know all about her being hot as a kid. <laughs> oh, she's a yeah, very sexy woman, and she, that really translates into the vampire lovers. I, I love that movie, yeah. And her I, daughter, her daughter's a knockout, too. There you go. I guess it's in the genes. There you go. I don't think there was, there was any other way for it to go. <laughs> Maybe so. And I always found Barbara Steele to just be like a really attractive woman too, with just such a unique look to her, you know? I remember yeah. Van Gore once said in a very old issue I, I bought used that um, Barbara Steele is the only woman whose eyelashes snarl, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, because she just has like these really provocative, you know, interesting eyes and her facial expressions. And the way she looks, she's attractive but kind of like in a little bit of a strange way there just aren't many women that look quite like that you know she's got karen a very black she's got a very well, european look to her yeah karen black's like that too like she's a very in, yeah. she was a very interesting looking woman not many women look like that you know no but i know what you're saying about barbara Steele. i mean she was in bava's films and you can't mm -hmm. go wrong with mario bava you know and she was in a fellini film as well yeah she was also in a fellini film yeah yeah, so she's like what I like about her and a lot of uh, like people like Vincent Price and her and Ingrid Pitt and uh, Christopher Lee is obviously these are great actors because look at Christopher Lee and Barbara Steele are still alive and they're still working if you look at their IMDb's. Barbara, Barbara Steele was supposed to be at a, a convention not too long ago, but she had to cancel. She's supposedly going to be at this Chiller Theater Horror convention coming up, so that should be nice. I may be a guest there that this that weekend. I'm not sure yet. I have to find out whether or not I'm shooting. So, because you know, I love to make guest appearances, but my shoots come first. Yeah, I saw the I saw the footage online um, of you at uh, 